laughs out of that, you know, like a bunch of people thought it was funny and stuff. And then some people said to me, that photo, we don't need to know the story. We don't need to know why you did it. It's a funny photo on its own and you should run with it. And I started running with it and I made it like my default one for YouTube. And, it, you know, it's just... A, they took the photo. I took it. You know, I set up I hit my camera yeah, yeah, yeah. on delay and I put okay. it on a tripod and I took a few photos and that's how I did it. You know, and I like having funny photos because, you know, I am a funny guy. And, uh, and I also like the fact that somebody like you would actually say, Oh, God forbid! Because that's like part of my act. You know, it's like my act is always like, I want people to like get nervous by the things I do. And then it like, you know, it separates and then, then some people are like really laughing and some people are like all nervous. And then I know like, who's who? The people who are laughing are Catholics. And the people who are really nervous are Jews. So I really have a good time with that. So that's a story on that. I like doing things that like make people nervous like that, you know? And then they walk away from me at the end of the show going, uh, is he really a rabbi? Is he really a rabbi? I love that shit. That's, that's my act. Shock value. You know, I play with your stereotypes. I bust stereotypes because I make people see, oh, if somebody sees somebody like me with payas, they think it's impossible that he would ever sit on the toilet with a shotgun and a beer. You know, whatever. Okay. Did I answer that with, you have any more comments on that? Look who's judging me. Look who's, ju look who's judging me, you know? <laughs> the, guy with the, the guy with the long beard who talk, opened the show by telling us about big tits. So there you go. <laughs> I didn't say the word. Okay. I said that she had big me dot. <laughs> well, beat up me dot in, in in Hebrew actually means measurements. So if you say she has big measurements, you alluded to the same thing. But I'd said it in a classy way, like the New York Times would say. Oh, uh, okay. Not held the New York Post. The New York Post would say titties, but the New York Times would say something much more elevated. <laughs> kind of like look for the intellectual. Idea. That's why I read the Post because it's like right down there. <laughs> then. <you know. laughs> All right, so listen, you want me to bring up your thing and what else you have to talk yeah, to me about? Do you have anything else before this week's Yeah, I, I do. There. Go ahead. Okay. Why don't you get your notes? Okay, my thing is uh, right here. Uh, okay, I got it. I know exactly what it is. Okay. Okay, so uh, where's the... Um, okay, I'll keep this up. So uh, last week we were talking about... Um, last week we were speaking about uh, the state of Israel and we got in a little bit of a heated discussion mm -hmm. because uh, you had a problem with what you called, <laughs> speaking of titties, you had a problem with what you called sucking off the public tit. <laughs> but you would never use the word tit. <laughs> never. And we don't do that here. Um, and you said that the, the Fermis in the state of Israel who um, learn Torah all day... And get welfare. Get welfare, and the and yeshivas are funded by... The state, you know, you you had you, you contempt contempt for them, and I was saying the opposite to that. And someone asked a question. I'll just say it was a viewer, Esther, who's my Facebook wife. Hey, Esther, how's it going? And she asked a great question. I thought, and she wanted me to forward to you. She has a hard time watching you streams because her computer. She, first of all, she's in Europe, so there could be like a delay. But like her computer doesn't stream this for some reason very well, and so she's always like ten seconds behind us, and it's really bad for her. So she's just going to watch the replays. But um, uh, what am I saying? So she, she had a question. She had a question. She said I should bring it to your attention because mm -hmm. she's not going to be here. So here was uh, the question. The question is, in the state of Israel, okay. When there's like a crisis, and Lord knows there's a crisis in the state of Israel every day of some sort, either internal or external with their neighbors, you know, there's always a problem. Do they ever go to the chief rabbi of the state of Israel and go there for, let's say, a bracha? No, not the chief rabbi. The chief rabbi is not respected in Israel. The Sephardi one is by the Sephardi community. Metzger? But, no, no. He's no, but the Ashkenazi. I mean, no one respects no Metzger. One respects the Ashkenazi chief rabbi, I mean, he's a functionary, he's a nothing. Like, it's been, uh, Abraham Shapiro was the last Gadol, who, Gadol who was uh, chief rabbi, so... What about Rabbi Lau? He wasn't a Gadol, he was a, he was a great man, but he wasn't a Gadol, he wasn't terribly learned. But uh, <laughs> uh, there are rabbis that people would turn to for, like, Avadya Yosef. And, and uh, who, who's the, the leading Ashkenazi rabbi? Who, who's 101 years old. Eliyasha? Yeah, Eliyasha. He's 101? Yeah. 
That's getting up there. I didn't realize he was he's so a, he's old. He's high, highly respected and the most influential Ashkenazi rabbi. Uh, I would say so. In, in, in Israel, but like the, the chief rabbi is not terribly respected in Israel. But what were you going to say? No, but I, the question that Esther had is, do they ever go, let's say that's not even the chief rabbi, forget that. Do they ever go to any of the rabbis and ask for a bracha before they do something? Virtually never. I, I can tell you this. This is what I told her, and I, I would... Uh, that I happen to know this because it's a story that's well told in Bells. Everybody says it. In the 1950, right before the 1956 war, which is the war of uh, Suez Canal, mm -hmm. uh, the head of the army, whoever that was back then, I don't think it was Moshe Dayan, but it was somebody, uh, they came to the Bells of Rebbe and they said, uh, you know, they came from Baraka and they said, here, here, uh, you know, we're about to go to this war and we have figured out we need to prepare 10,000 graves. We're going we're gonna to take some really bad losses in this war. And the bills are saying you will not need to make those graves. And he was right. If you look in history, they did not lose 10,000 people in that war. And uh, that's the only one I really know of, right? I mean, but I don't know. It's generally not a dumb thing. Like, the non-religious generally don't respect and look for spiritual guidance from the rabbis. Uh, the the Sephardim are somewhat different because even the most secular Sephardi will like kiss the hands of a, of a and, and then and then and, and then go sell cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I remember the Sephardim I'd meet I'd meet uh, in the porn industry and I'd say how are you doing? They'd say thank God. Oh yeah, yeah. You, any taxi cab driver in Tel Aviv, you get in the car, right? And the guy's got like no yarmulke, nothing, right? But no. he's got pictures of Avadi. He's Yosef. got pictures of Avadi Yosef, Baba yeah. Sali, the Baba yeah. yeah. He's got the, yeah. the, yeah. the yeah. Hamsa yeah. sign sticking yeah. down. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, oh yeah. You walk in with the yarmulke, and he's like, oh, I love the, I love you know the Jewish yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. blah 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 blah. And then you know, like he's got a, you know, he's like a pimp on the side. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's got yeah. like, yeah, you know. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like the religious. Generally not liked by the non-religious, and the non-religious don't look to rabbis for for blessings and, and for brachas, with the exception of the Svadim. But like the Ashkenazi secular, they hate the rabbis, and and uh, Israel is like two separate worlds between the religious and the and the secular, and and so it's not like generally the Israeli thing to like look to rabbis for moral, spiritual guidance or blessings or uh, trying to foretell what's going to happen. I mean, they, most secular Israelis would, you know, sooner go to a, a non-Jewish fortune teller for, for a blessing or to read the future than, than to a rabbi. So, so, okay, so that's your answer. You're saying they don't do it. In really. In general, they're not going to do Particularly it. Particularly not with the Ashkenazi secular. Right, because if they did, because like there are secular or secular countries in the Arab world, right, in the Muslim world, but they might be intent to go to like one of the mullahs or something, and 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 you know before they go to war or be, or something like that. I don't know enough. Okay, so Esther's point was if that were true, that they do go to the to to one of the rabbanim. To get a bracha, then you need people learn just for that purpose. It could be understood for the secular world that you need to have you need to employ guys who can learn so the Torah can be saved, so that you can grow great rabbis and they can give you spiritual advice and they can tell you what to do. Well, it's kind of like artists. We've had this explosion in public funding for the arts over the past sixty years, but it hasn't produced great artists. Like the great artists got uh, patrons down through history right. who, who would support them. So, so too, like what applies for art, I think also applies for religion. All this massive public funding of uh, right-wing orthodox yeshivot in Israel is not producing great Torah scholars. Uh, sure many, it is. Many of the greatest Torah scholars come out of... Uh, um, I don't agree. ...the, the uh, religious Zionist world where they don't get... have nearly as much emphasis on... Uh, abstaining from work to, to study Torah. So I don't know, you're just talking out your backside right now. You no, that's true. Give me some examples of great Torah scholars being produced by this system. Oh, okay. How about... How, this is a ridiculous conversation. Uh, you, you mentioned like Rabbi Eliashev. Yeah. Where, right. where, where, is, is he a religious Zionist? No. Thank you. Uh, Rabbi, uh, who are the big people? Uh, uh, Orbach. Is he a religious Zionist? No. 